I want to start first um, by talking to Till, who made a wonderful film called The Iran Job, which was filmed um, all in the country. Iran, of course, has, has gone through difficulties with, um, with journalists coming in, and especially American filmmakers. We tried to get journalist visas. Um, in the beginning of the process, we were going to do um, the film with HBO Real Sports, because it's about an American basketball player who plays in Iran. And they, um, so they were going to send a, a crew and a correspondent, Brian Gumbel. And we were going to use that to do a 10 minute piece, which would then hopefully help us fundraise to do the feature version. HBO was um, eventually unable to ensure their crew because of the embargo. So um, with that, we realized we weren't going to get journalist visas either. So then uh, we decided, well, we uh, still want to make the film. I'm dual citizen German American and I decided to just enter as a tourist with my German passport. Uh, like I said, we, we initially tried to get the visas and we were dealing with uh, uh, the Iranian mission to the UN in New York. The, in the absence of an embassy, they, they use the, you know, that office in New York. And the guy who runs that was initially actually supportive of the project and said, we'll give you the visas. When HBO was unable to, to ensure their crew, he called out of the blue, called Sarah, and in Farsi told her, your project is garbage and uh, we're not going to let you do it. So I couldn't really tell anybody what, what I was doing. Catherine, tell us a little bit about your project and whether you worked with film commissioners or thought about that. My film is called Call Me Kuchu, um, and we were looking at the LGBT activist community in Uganda. Uh, we didn't work with any film commissioners. Uh, at we just entered on tourist visas. Uh, Malika Zuhali Worrell and I, we were the two filmmakers. And we had just decided kind of to make the film and were on planes, you know, within two weeks or so. So we, we didn't have much prep time in terms of getting in contact with people, nor did we really feel like it would behoove us to do that. So we just went and entered as tourists, and um, a few days into our stay, we did um, get media passes, just because we, we knew that we'd mostly be filming behind closed doors and stuff, so we weren't so worried about that, but we knew occasionally we'd like to you know, be filming protests or you know, people on the street or whatever, so we wanted to be prepared for that. And fortunately, we were also doing a small piece for CNN while we were there, so we were able to put, put them on the media accreditation, although I'm not sure that we would have needed to because actually Uganda has a fairly strong sense of freedom of the press and they don't really hold back journalists so much. So I, I don't think it really would have been a problem. We started shooting in uh, 2008 and uh, my filmmaking partner, Julia Meltzer, we both directed and produced the film. Um, she started shooting in the mosque in, um, our film is, I'll just back up, our film is about a Quran school for women and girls in Damascus, Syria. Julia approached the government to get permission to shoot the film and the government never gave permission. They didn't say yes, they didn't say no. Um, so therefore there was no way that we were ever gonna go and try and get some kind of journalist um, visa for the project. Uh, so uh, we went in on tourist visas um, there is no freedom of the press in Syria, and um, it's also not a place that you're going to be able to get camera equipment through. So we would co come in, uh, we would always fly to Be Beirut and come in through the land border um, between Lebanon and Syria, and because that uh, there's no x-ray equipment at that border, and there is at the airport in Damascus. We would say that we were shooting a, a wedding, and that was, when you're women, you can get away with that. Um, you can say that you're shooting weddings because women do wedding videos because um, a lot of the weddings are sex segregated. We spent three months every night before we made our first trip to Uzbekistan. We were on the phone for about an hour and a half um, speaking, trying to get a uh, visa and access to come into Uzbekistan, not as journalists, just to just to come in. It was very tricky. We, there was a film commission. We didn't even know about the film commission until we went. We first went in in 2003, then we went back in 2005. And at that point, the film commission got in touch with us. And the reason they got in touch with us um, was to say that they wanted to charge us $200 a day to, to film. 